Sveiki, mili draugai, šiandien mes susitikime su Darija Albers pakalbėti apie psichologiją, apie vidinį pasaulį. Šiandieną mano intervių, podcastas, vyks anglų kalba, aš iš karto atsiprašau, jeigu mano kalba bus netokia tobula, neturiu kaip ir kada jos tobulinti, bet aš pabandysiu išpausti geriausiai iš savęs, tam, kad jūs gautumėt kuo daugiau naudingos informacijos. So, Darija. Nice to meet you. Um, thank you. Thank you for uh, participating in this podcast. And I think that you have much, much to say uh, for a lot of people. Because um, for me, it was many years uh, I couldn't, couldn't uh, find a pill, a mm. magic pill for, for my... Mm, for my psychology, for my mental performance, you know, because uh, my mental part, like physically I was always prepared, but mentally it was like a stick uh, in, the wheels. In, in the wheels, <laughs> in yes. The wheels, yeah. I couldn't, couldn't, you know, perform so, so good that I know that I can. Mm. And we have a few, few days talk with you. And Now already I feel I feel a little progress, mm. and I believe that um, in the future we will make really good and big things together. For sure. But now let's try to explain what are we talking about for the people. Let's start from your background. Who are you, and what is your background? So, first, thank you for having me here, of course, and letting me talk about what I'm doing. I'm very passionate um, about what I'm doing because uh, I was a fighter also. Mm. And similar to you, I was physically extremely strong, extremely skilled, well, yeah, technically one of the best in the world, right? And I fought the best in the world also. And I struggled with mental performance. I just struggled with getting my, my emotions right, my mind right, and... Um, So, yeah, I feel you fighters, so that's why I took on this career, and um, uh, so I studied first physical therapy. Sorry, mm -hmm. you fought in KOK too? Yes, yes, I did. I fought in KOK, I fought in World Fighting League, um, I fought in um, China, Wuling Feng, okay. uh, all kinds of very, very um, big promotions, big names also. So, yeah, I know. I know definitely how it is to, to be under pressure on the better you get and how it feels when you completely block out, you lose, you prepared so well physically, mm -hmm. everything's so amazing, but then out. That's it. Can't move, can't use your skills, can't use your arms, legs, you're blanking. The best, uh, the best you can, can uh, achieve is like f from 40 to 60 percent of, of, of... Yeah, of, if you get 60 percent, you're good. That's good, yeah. Sixty <laughs> percent is already good mm, mm. from what we train, right? And then, I mean, especially you, like glory level. There's so much pressure, and it's, it's amazing, right? Because it makes you who you are to build that character. But we need skills for that. So, as a fighter, uh, when I was studying first, I went to school. I went for physical therapy because I thought everything is physical, mm. and I was really interested in the body physiology. That's how you start, and you think like, oh, everything is so physical. And um, then after a while, I found out, oh, man, there's a lot of mental work in this. Yeah. Um, so I studied psychology. Um, my mom and my dad said, like, yeah, okay, if you do develop like this, what else will you study? Quantum physics? Mm. <laughs> Because it's just, you know, I think that's just how it is. The universe gives you something to work on. Yeah. And it, it gives you those ideas and you just have to follow them up. So then I studied psychology because I thought everything is mental. Learned a lot, obviously, went into sport psychology as an athlete. That's, that's my life and that's what I work mostly at still. And uh, then a few years in, I was always a very spiritual person, but a few years in then came up to me the question, there's more than physical and mental, there's the spiritual aspect. The okay. spirit of life, you know, the spiritual aspect of fighting and that's why warrior spirit, right? My program is all about unleashing the 
the true what it means warrior spirit i'm talking now a lot of uh, the spirit the uh, the spirit of, of, of mm. you know of humanity yeah. what do you feel and how you connect with, with the world with, yeah. with your life and uh, a lot of uh, young followers like uh, don't understand it they say that oh you must be must be getting old because you start yeah. to talk about the spirituality and everything yeah. but how is important spirituality Look at this. For, a, for a fighter and for a for a for a yeah. human being yeah um it is extremely essential because your spirit right your philosophy is what will bring you over like when you think you reach the, the top it will bring you for it's the spirit it's the belief the spirit the meaning you have in your life right mm -hmm. we all know that you have the physical skills then you build some mental skills and we might talk a little later about that mm -hmm. and then on top and this every top level fighter will tell you that it's the spirit it's what you have here when you feel it right mm -hmm. when you know Why do you why do you do what you do when you know the bigger picture? Yeah, right? it's when like like I, I always say that if you fight for money, you don't get uh, yeah. good results. Yeah. When you fight for a purpose, yeah, or do, I, do yeah. everything for a purpose. Yeah, it's everything in life like that. If you don't have the purpose and meaning, that's when we spiritually break. That we that's look. There's so much in language also. You, there's a broken spirit, yeah. right? A broken person has a broken spirit. So yeah, I, and then I found out. Wow, there's a whole spiritual dimension about awareness and consciousness about finding our place here also in the world and i studied then uh, contemplative practices and mindfulness mm -hmm. and put it all together into my program and now i teach the whole thing <laughs> uh, the link you can find below by the way and with what uh, kind of fighters did you, you you work with fighters or or different athletes uh, i work with all kinds of different athletes okay. i work um, mostly i work with mma fighters and boxers mm -hmm. uh, so also some kickboxers but kickboxing is still when it comes to mental performance i have to say a little bit behind so the mma fighters they know exactly all of them do cognitive training and well, not all of them but most of them do cognitive training and mental performance training Boxers, no question about it. Look Because at Lomachenko, the, right? It's 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 the 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 the, the high, highest level. Yeah, exactly, exactly. They, they know they know what is the you know the, yeah. the the most important thing. So a lot of different athletes also I have, and then also I work with the military and special forces. Okay. And special forces, that's main of their training. Main of their training is mental training. All the physical stuff, of course, and they're super fit. They're as fit as any top level athlete. Yeah. Obviously, but main goal make them mentally bulletproof right if they go out somewhere in the jungle they have to jump out of a helicopter and are like in a dead zone somewhere right they need to function at every moment and every pressure on top right and they understand it we and, do and i have a friend a friend in the military that uh, a few times when he jumped out of the helicopter broke his leg no oh, and i think after an accident like no. this how again you can you know jump from the helicopter from the you know from the uh, such height yeah yeah <sighs> well when they jump out of the of the airplanes in the dark in the night yeah. like very silent like to it's, nowhere it's, it's, just to yeah, nowhere just into a big black hole yeah, yeah exactly or like one of my guys he got shot in the shoulder right because one of his colleagues wasn't really aware Mm -hmm. couldn't deal with the pressure with anxiety so he got shot in the shoulder thanks god not in the head not right in the head. so it's all good he came back we had to do a lot of work because there was obviously there's the trauma the ptsd yeah. it's also a trust issue with your colleague who maybe couldn't hit the pressure so i deal with a lot of uh, interesting for sure fields and um but at the end if it's an athlete or is it a fighter or is it a military person They, it's the same things what we have to work out. It comes down at the end to the same mm -hmm. things, uh, mental, spiritual and yeah, physical, obviously. So it's an interesting journey. What kind of big names did you have uh, in your portfolio? <laughs> <laughs> If you yeah. can say it like that. So I, I, because as a, when I was younger, I traveled the world, right? I said, okay, I want to go out and I want to work and train with the best fighters in the world. So as a fighter already, uh, I had the chance to work with so many high level coaches, so Henry Hof, right? I worked uh, Ray Longo, we worked for a long time together, Longo and Whiteman team. 
Uh, I worked with Andy Sauer. I went to New Zealand and worked with City Kickboxing. So that was a very good learning curve for me also to Adesanya, to observe him mm. in his uh, environment, how he, his mindset, for example, is very special for sure to, to the traditional, really tough, and we have to be tough and hard warriors, yeah. right? He's very playful. I had the chance also for a short time to work with the Fury team. So I worked with them. Tyson was, Fury. Yeah, with his team. Uh, Huey Fury also, a few of those guys. Uh, super interesting experience. Again, such a different mindset, such a, wow, like you, you get to see really how they work. You work with them, you exchange all those experiences. It's very powerful. Mm -hmm. Made me pff, level up extremely. All of those guys. I mean, that, there's so many more names I always forget because I, my work now is still, so I work one-to-one -one with a lot of fighters, but I also, and we talked about that, I consult for a lot of people. So when they have teams for, for coaches, when they have uh, some particular fight coming up, then I consult, okay, what's the strategy? We look at the psychology of the other fighter, the movement styles, obviously I'm a kickboxer, so mm -hmm. that always goes in there. And uh, so I have a very good network and I work equally, um, I learn equally from them also. So I work with a lot of people, but definitely, I work, wow, I'm just I'm super glad okay, that I can learn. Okay. So tell me, the highest level athletes, do they have um, mental problems, like, like, uh, like uh, really big stress that they can't, can't handle uh, before the competition, before the fights, before the big night? <laughs> How is it? You know, of course, most of them have. Of well, course. And, and you know that also because you talk to other fighters, right? We know that. We sit in locker rooms. We see what's happening in the locker rooms. Yeah. And uh, this is part of the warrior culture, right? This, this also, the brain and the mind will always come up with negative things. It will always come up with anxiety. We all are traumatized to something that happened in our childhood or whatever, right? It's, it's really the part, the part of the game to you have the suffering you have the anxiety you have those crazy racing thoughts about that you can't do anything like and you black out and you yeah. you start shaking your nervous system is off right it is an equal part of what we're doing right yeah. it's it, it just there there are some fighters right let's talk about adesanya very playful character he yeah. likes to play and he is the best when he plays mm -hmm. he when he gets too serious, right? When he gets like too stiff about things, look how he fights. Different person. Like, yeah. But when he is playful, focused, extremely focused, extremely concentrated, because just when you're playful, right, and you're in ease, and as you know that, you're still laser sharp, right? And that's the skill. To be completely, we always say focused aggression, right? So you, you are focused extremely. You see everything, you're completely aware, but you have this playful thing. Right? Mm -hmm. It's not because if you constantly treat your life as a life and death situation or every fight, you're going to burn out. A lot uh, of this people. Is, this is my, 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 my problem. Yeah. yeah, it is a natural problem. Like death or life yeah. uh, each time. It's, the, it's, it's so complicated and mm. it's like I, I look at it so seriously. Mm. But one of my best performance was uh, against uh, in Greece in Athens uh, in, against Antonio Plaza. But when mm. a night before, uh, I was talking, uh, walking, and talking with uh, Pavel Zhurovlev, mm -hmm. and he, he talked to me like uh, a story about about his his uh, like uh, stress mm -hmm. and how he handles it and everything. And I was talking to myself after. Like if a guy with a level like Pavel Zhurovlev has so much stress and you know um, don't feel himself anxious, uh, anxious, and yeah, yeah, yeah. anxious, feel, feel himself anxious and, and stressed, yeah. then everybody has the same problem. Man, yeah. I need to you know get my shit together yeah. and go and do, do do that stuff. And I go, went there. I was like, yeah. you know, you know, how you say? It wasn't like like always life and death uh, question. Yes. I, yes. I just go uh, gonna have fun. Yes. Just gonna be myself over, over there and yes. boom. 
And everybody was like, whoa, who is <laughs> yeah, that remember. guy? Yeah, remember. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but, but that's how it is, right? The mind and uh, our nervous system, our emotions, right? They are, we need them. We need them. This is a, the, our brain and our nervous system is a great tool to, to navigate through life. But there are moments where we have to just really learn to, to use it, right? <laughs> the, the right way. And it will, it will, or the mind will always come up with some really crazy stuff because that's part of our culture, right? We're all negatively conditioned. Mm -hmm. We have also a negativity bias. So we, we are more um, prone to pick up on negative things. And under pressure, that happens even more. But those are mental skills, right? What, what I'm doing, I'm teaching you mental skills. Mm -hmm. And we talked about that. Right? I'm teaching you the skills like physically and people, a lot of people don't understand that. The brain is so plastic, the nervous system is so plastic, it adapts constantly. I read it's, a few books about it. Yeah, yes, about neuroplasticity, neuroplasticity, exactly. Neuroplasticity. And neuroplasticity is real, it's extremely powerful and we need to use it. So when you train your body, right? everybody understands, you want to be strong, you want to be bigger biceps, you have a program and you train it and you just do your training and after a while, if you have mm -hmm. the right program, you will see the gains, right? Yeah. And it's similar when it comes to the mental performance practice or the mental skill practice. You need certain skills, certain abilities to train them, right? Attention, mm -hmm. focus, emotional regulation, thought regulation or thought control you can learn, right? You can learn to regulate your nervous system. But we don't learn it. Nobody teaches us that in school, mm -mm. right? And even in kickboxing schools or in MMA schools, coaches should know that there should be someone in the team who takes care about that part. Because yeah. um, as I say always in my seminars, and it's, I really want people to understand that, it's one thing that you physically grow as a fighter and that your coach grows you physically. But if your mind and your spirit didn't grow with it, you will get to a point in your career, a lot of athletes, also in other sports, also in business, right? You, you think about all your business skills, but if you didn't grow your heart and your soul mm -hmm. to be a leader, let's say, right? And whatever pressure or whatever high peak performance position yeah. you are in your life, you will, you will hit like a moment where you might lose it, where you feel you burned out you all of a sudden you feel it's too much because you didn't grow. You didn't grow your mental skill towards your physical skills. Yeah. And it's, it's mind blowing. And I, you know, when I, I teach it every day and I, as we talked already, I have a lot of very close connections also to my clients and they call me night and day sometimes. And I live this because this is, we need to teach people that we need to teach people how to use their brain and their mind and their soul. Mm -hmm. together to, to raise to the full potential. There's nothing else what I want to do. It's my life mission. Okay. Then, in your opinion, mm -hmm. what makes a complete fighter? Complete fighter, maybe complete athlete mm. in general. So, so when you see a human or let's say, let's say the fighter, <coughs> mm -hmm. again, Physically, you need to be fit, right? You need to do your of training. Course, you train course. twice a day, six, to six days a week. We're not even talking about that. If you don't have the physical skills, I, I can't do magic with you, right? I won't make you fly yeah. if you don't have the wings, right? So, um, so physical skills, obviously, super important part. Then second, mental skills, right? Yeah. Attention training, again, emotional regulation. So emotional skills also to learn to deal with what is going on with your mind, what is going on with your emotions? Where does it come from? Understanding yourself, awareness of yourself. Mm -hmm. And then spiritual. A fighter needs to know his purpose. Needs to have a meaning. In life. In life, in, on, on the journey to see the bigger picture. Because otherwise, if you lack always, that, that's why you see fighters who are extremely powerful, right? Look at you. You fucking lethal, right? It is what it is. You're lethal. Your physical skills, your abilities, your eye, your reaction timing, everything is on top, right? But now, maybe you have a time when you, you didn't work on your spirit, yeah. right? So you lost your spirit, you lost your meaning and your purpose. Mm -hmm. And that's something, if we don't know that it all belongs to, to, add, to bring us to the top yeah. level, you'll be always feeling like something is lacking, something is missing, mm -hmm. right? 
That's when sure. you always constantly stand, are under your potential. So it's always physically, mentally, emotionally and spiritually. You have to get all of it on the highest level, basically. Let's talk then about the spiritual, mm -hmm. or uh, excuse me, about mental performance. Mm. Is it possible to, to train it? Is it possible, you know, to uh, for for some random person to to control it? For sure. So you know, again, mental skill training, same like physical skill training, plastic brain. So. If you know how to use your brain, for example, attention and yeah. concentration and focus. Be because right? sorry, because like when you you know, like you said, pump the muscles, mm -hmm. you feel you feel the yeah. pressure, you feel the you know tension, you feel yeah. how they are growing. But the mind, That's when you start to you know starting to think or meditate or do something, and you just. Yeah. Just, just leave this universe, you know, fly <laughs> yeah. away somewhere. Yes, yes, yes. You, you can't feel it, so yes. it, it feels like it's impossible to... And uh, many people, I think maybe even uh, 95, 98% of the you know, whole, whole, whole uh, universe uh, mm. uh, say that oh, it's impossible. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, it's just the way I am, that's Yes, it. oh my God, I love that you say that, because yeah. this is exactly the question I think that every... Every mental skill trainer or mental yeah. performance coach is like, oh, <laughs> again, <laughs> okay. again, again, yeah, again. Um, even my guys, when they work with me, and it, you will have those moments too, where you tell me like, Daria, I don't think this is all working. I have to sit down and do focus exercises and meditations. And, yeah. and we talk about a lot of things and I don't think it works. Exactly, that, because you don't see it. But it's also because it's our cultural conditioning. Like mm. in our culture, look, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, where was psychology? It was like it was all about just working yeah. out the inadequacies, right? So, so psychology for a very long time was just oriented on what is wrong with you, and when we if say, it's wrong, uh, but but in in our culture even it's a shame to say yes, to someone that yes. it's something wrong with you that you like psychologically you can't handle yourself or yes. your emotions. Yes, yes. So it was a topic like you know. Sweep it under the carpet. Don't yeah. talk about that. So yeah. we have a, a very big cultural conditioning to okay. If I work with my mind, I work with my psyche, with my soul. It might mean something is not right. But that's the difference to also regular psychology and what I do because I focus. Uh, it's called more. The background is positive psychology. Positive psychology mm, psychology means work on your potentials, right? To find in someone. Not the inadequacies, yes, we pay attention to that too, but also, okay, how can I light up your spirit? How can we together, when we work together, find, okay, what is it, like what makes you really thrive, you know? What is it, what makes you really grow? What are the skills you can even perform better, right? You, you, again, attention training, focus, all of those things. And um, I just love even, even, even yeah. what Even when, when we had... A uh, little talk, like we talked for an hour, mm, yeah. and did did the, the meditation and visualization. Mm. And you remember, I went to the gym, yes. even with the broken rib right now. Yeah. Yeah. I was hitting yeah. the pads like crazy. Yes. I don't know where the energy was coming yes. from. Yes. But the day before, not, not the same day, yeah. but in the morning, I was like so yes. passive, so weak, mm. so, you know, didn't want to work, didn't want to do nothing. Just, you yes. know. Came here just to train, you know, because I need. I know that I need to train. That's yes, it. Yes. And then I wanted to do that. And I, yes. And you could see it in your uh, movements, right? I told you. I think you can music. see it in my eyes. Yes. Like, yes. Of course, the eyes are opening up, and so. So yeah, I just lost for a moment the topic, but like coming back to it. Of course, you can. You can work on yourself. Of course, you can change. That's why I do my work. Yeah. My work is to 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 show the people, to show the world that each of us can change, right? Obviously, you have to have the, the um, intention to do it. Because, I, again, I can't do the magic on you. I try my magic, but you will have to open heart and mind to, to take it in and to do your work, right? You can dream about being a fighter, but if you don't go into the gym and get punched in the face, you won't be one, right? Of course. So, and with the mind, it's just, it's just a little bit sometimes a slower and uh, less obvious effect. So at the beginning you think like, oh, I don't know, I start working. It's, it's just also such a, it seems for people who are not in psychology or not working into the mind, 
seems like a topic which is so vague, right? Oh, psychology. Is it my childhood? And this, my traumas? Oh, because there's chaos in the head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so mental skill training brings you a little bit more structure into your training, right? into your training or into, into your life also. Yeah. So, of course, you can change. And uh, that's why we do very specific exercises, right? As I told you, you, for example, you have definitely concentration <laughs> problem because you're in your mind everywhere. Yeah, right? because, because I, I do a lot of stuff in yeah, my life. Yeah. A lot of stuff in my life. And when I'm at home in Lithuania, I'm just talking and I have to pick up the yeah. phone ten, yeah. ten times. Then yeah. I go to there, 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 do that, yeah. do that. Yeah. A lot of stuff is going on. Yeah. And, I, and I noticed that, that my concentration for, you know, one work for, you know, a longer period of time, mm -hmm. I can't, I can't, yeah. I can't yeah, have yeah. it. Even, even when I come to you, first thing that like, it's like in my blood. First thing I went to, to watch, uh, to, to look the, at the, the, the Wi-Fi wi wi code. Mm. And then I was like, no, mm. no, we're going to talk and mm. I'm going to leave all my, uh, you know, problems and, and work aside. Yeah. Now I'm going to be yeah. present. I'm going to be here. Look, look. When, uh, when warriors, right, when you talk about the samurai or the Spartans or some ninja warriors or some of the top level athletes in the world, someone who performs on the peak, they all talk about mental stability and mental clarity. Of course. Right? You can't, like, and that's a mental skill. People don't understand it. To have a clarity and a balance and a stability inside you, let's talk mentally, then you have to work on that. And there are certain very specific exercises how you do it. Mm -hmm. And it's not like, and you know that, I don't let you meditate two hours a day because nobody has time for this. Of course. It's little exercises very intelligently placed, which then step by step will change your brain, right? It will enact mm -hmm. neuroplasticity. And the changes you will, you will then feel in the moment, like when you, for example, inspiring, that you could keep the concentration inspiring, right? All of a sudden. Wow, okay, I, I stayed like I wanted to do my techniques, I had my, my strategy for the sparring, I stick to it. So you will start, or you engage in a topic and you won't be mental time traveling so yeah. much, that's how we call it. So when you're not present, you're mental time traveling into the future and think like, oh my God, what or do I have to do? in the future, in the past, in the past ev yeah. everywhere. Yeah, look, look before the fight. And, and that's something you, have, you can learn to control when you sit in the locker room in the fight and your mind, and you didn't Yes, have... that, that was my second question now, yeah. that about emotions. Yeah. Um, you know, the weeks before the fight, you feel good, you feel strong, you <laughs> like, feel motivated. Yeah. But two days before fight or the fight day, you're like, emotions are coming, yeah. you know outside and yeah. you, you, you can't control them and you, you start to think, uh, like talk to yourself positively, but yeah. po positively do some exercise breathing and still you're like yeah. somewhere yeah. there. Yeah. Is it possible to teach yourself to control them or, or, or to work with them? Yeah. Because sometimes yeah. it looks like it's impossible. Yeah. Whatever you do, nothing goes right. Yes, and it's interesting that you say that, yeah, but it's the same thing. Do you think someone would, like when people look, look at your fights, uh, someone who never entered a kickboxing gym, is it possible? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, not really. <laughs> They're going to be completely They're dead after a half minute, right? Or even after 10 seconds, right? They're going to get knocked out, that's it, dead, yeah. right? So, sure, because they didn't train the skills. But is it possible for a young guy who puts work in 7, 10 years of really hard fight to get to your level? Of course. Yeah. Right. Same with the with the mental skill training or uh, emotional regulation. You can learn to regulate. Look, what happens before the fight, and I think that's interesting also for mm -hmm. for the for the fighting community. So, so when we like the the pre fight pre fight stress, right? It starts sometimes a week before, sometimes a few days for people. Some people have it when they enter on the venue, right? Yeah. yeah they yeah. go in the locker room. But most of us, it's like a few days. A few days, yes. So, so what happens to our mind? Our mind, if we, by now, didn't learn to control it, to be in the present moment, to get our mind, like, okay, to, to connect to our body, to be focused on just that moment right now, mm -hmm. our mind will do the mental time traveling. When we mental yeah. time traveling, it will travel, and you know that, you sit in the locker room and you think, 
Oh my God. Oh, shit. I, and, uh, in, in Vilnius, usually I fought, the la my fight is last, and there's a lot of people and teams in my uh, yeah. locker room. Yeah. And someone comes with the bloody nose, just yes. get knocked out. Exactly. They're all sad. Someone just won. And they're, and, all, and yes. they're like, whoa. Yeah. And you're like absorbing all yes. those emotions and, mm -hmm. you know, sitting, just watching it, yeah. you know. And, so when you then, so when you did not learn to control even, you. Uh, sorry, even, mm -hmm. even you, you go to the fight, your fight. And you feel like you already fought. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, exactly. We, we, we talked about that. You sit in the mm. locker room. If you cannot control your mind, you, the mind will come up with everything. A week ago, oh, oh, I, I run 5.1 kilometers and not 5.5 kilometers. Yeah, oh, that yeah. makes a difference. Oh, and this one sparring when I skip this one round. Oh, you remember when I eat the burger? I don't think I'm yeah, yeah, right. yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. Uh, all a, a, of a lot sudden. of bullshit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And but that's what minds do. That's what, if you don't don't have it into into the present. If you don't control, if you do not take control over your concentration, focus, and attention, it will go everywhere and it will fuck you up. It will completely. So you will go into the first round. Why you did in the locker room already twelve rounds, and you find so many reasons why all of a sudden this guy looks much fitter than you. And look at the legs. I even he has huge legs. But it's just like yeah, sometimes yeah. with my fighters, we laugh. After this, we laugh, right? When we after, work through after. it. After, but in the but, present moment, it yeah, <laughs> doesn't seem some uh, so of uh, funny. Of course, of course, especially when you don't have the tools, right? Yeah. So then another thing, what kicks in, right? Your thoughts are crazy. What kicks in? Nervous system, right? Our autonomic nervous system. We are made to, we are built in our nervous system to fight or flight, right? To, to, to leave a situation or to freeze. That's just how it is. And when, when a stressful situation comes on, mm -hmm. when we were cavemen, we all, you look at this person or the lion or whatever it was, you fight it. So you mobilize all of your energies, all of your powers, yeah. the whole spirit, like, okay, you fight that person because it's maybe life dead. Or you run away because sometimes it was smarter to run away, yeah. right? If you see 20 people coming up, maybe it was better to run away because it doesn't, doesn't help the tribe when you're dead. Right? <laughs> <laughs> or sometimes you freeze. And in the animal kingdom, it is like this, right? Animals will freeze. Mm -hmm. You play dead. And can't right? do nothing. Yeah. You can't do nothing. So you completely, you, you, die. you can't well, use well, it's, it's Usually it's when you need to jump. From the from very 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 weird, high, yeah, yeah, yeah. high, and you just then yeah, uh, jump, man. Yeah, I, I can't. You know, like uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, they push, <laughs> and you like a brick, <laughs> fall. That's exactly it, right? And 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 again, it's part of the warrior thing. Like when people think it shouldn't, it's just it is normal that it is like that, right? Now, what do you want to do? Because a lot of people get <laughs> flight or freeze, yeah. right? But we want to step into fighting, into fighting mode, right? Yeah. And everybody gets there so a little it's, bit it's, different. So you have to be in the, between them, in the middle of them. Yeah, you just uh, you have to be like in the forward action mode, right? Yeah. Not retrieving and not like freezing, because when you, a lot of fighters and I had that extremely concrete legs. Yeah. You know, and all of a sudden you can't move your feet. Mm -hmm. And right? you have bricks in your arms. Oh, like, the shoulders. <laughs> yeah, everything, yeah. yeah. It's just it's like your, even your vision slows down, right? Yeah, yeah. On, it, on react, reactive uh, only after you get a punch. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So sometimes you wake up quicker when the, also when there's a better opponent. Yeah. Because you, you, you get it because your body and your mind wants to survive, right? Yeah. So. But there are very specific techniques we can do to move away from the freeze and the flight into the fight, mm -hmm. right? Into like, okay, forward. Into Some needs a little bit more activation because they're more f frozen. Yeah. Some needs a little bit uh, less activation because there's so much in fight. They're over, yeah. right? They're overdone it. So you regulate your nervous system. And that's something we know how to do. So you, you want to say that you can control your thoughts. Yeah. Maybe, let me say that. Not necessary, because you can't control your thoughts, but you can learn to have a different relationship to your thoughts. And you will learn that in the future. Woohoo! <laughs> Glory bell! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly that. Exactly that. So, so you can 
so you can change your relationship to your thoughts. So every day, all of a million thoughts, around 60,000 thoughts a day come into our minds. 95% of them are repetitive, the same things. We're just probably thinking yeah. the same things yeah. every day. And then that's why the outcome is usually the same, right? So, but what you can, especially when there's a lot of negative thoughts in your mind, you can learn with very specific practices, also in your meditation, but also focus on concentration exercises, awareness exercises, to now make it diff uh, have a distance between the thought and you. So our problem in the, as fighters or in our culture, and also even the guys from the military who come to me, mm -hmm. is that we think we are each of our thoughts. We take our thoughts for sorry because we mm. feel them, right? We feel so, them. And sometimes, yeah, I wanted just to say that you start to feel them. Yes. You feel, think a lot. you like battling your thoughts with your thoughts. Yes. And, you know, like measuring is it right exactly. or is it wrong? And then you start to you know, feel yes. it and it start to, you know, yes. put, uh, squeeze you. Yeah, so, so one of those things I teach my, my clients or my athletes is to get a different relationship to the thoughts. So instead of, that's how we call it in psychology, instead of participating in each of your thoughts and each of your emotions, you can learn to step out and be the observer. So you're, oh. an, and, and you, you're learning to distance yourself. So you are here now and you observe your thoughts. So you know in that moment you're not your thought. And you can learn that, right? So but again, what, the, what I wanted to ask, so you have special techniques for that. Yes, yes. And all of that you can learn by buying your program. Program. Exactly. Yes. Ooh, <laughs> my easy as that. Exactly. Easy as that. Uh, yeah. My, my a, a lot of uh, clients you do have. Exactly. Or a lot, a lot of people bought your, your, your program. Yes. And they're very happy with that because I came up apparently with a program. So what I wanted to do when COVID came. Yeah because I couldn't travel. I usually teach a lot of workshops, seminars, travel the world. And then COVID came and I was like, mm, okay, travel less. And again, like, like everybody else had a little bit of a depression and thought like, oh my God. But I stayed uh, in our house in Germany at a lake and I was swimming every day in a beautiful cold lake and did some wood runs and some, like I just really get in tune in myself. And I said like, okay, this is the time I have three months now to write down a program a mental performance program, which everybody can do from a five-year-old to a 90-year-old, athlete to non-athlete, because cool. it, it is what it is. If you have the right structure down, you can battle everything. If you understand how you mentally, how, what's happening in your thoughts, understand how you function, you understand your emotions, where they come from, uh, how to deal with them, and you learn to really, you go deep and you find your purpose and you find your meaning, which we all have, we just mm -hmm. need sometimes a person who helps us a little bit on the way, right? If, if you like, if you work be, really on uh, this. Be, sorry, interrupt. Uh, the, sometimes that it's, it's a problem of, I think, of all humanity that we, we don't trust ourselves. Yeah. And even if we know that this is the right thing to do, we need someone to put the finger and said, yeah. do it. Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. And if you, you, you can't do it by yourself. No. I... Sometimes you just need a person. That's why, I, like I'm on the highest level of kickboxing right now, but still I'm looking for people to join the team yes. and, and to help me and to kick my ass, like yeah, yeah. move, yeah. man, do. Yeah. I know what, what, what they, they are giving me, the exercises, the, the, a, lot of, a lot of, you know, information and stuff. I know all that. Mm. But if no one, you know, uh, repeats it to me, yeah. I'm like, oh, it's a waste of time. Yeah, like, of course. Uh, yeah. Of course. I believe it won't lead like, to anywhere. Like, look at my meditations, right? I did that for 12 years. And yeah. honestly, sometimes I wake up and I'm like, oh, God, I don't want to do that. And then when I don't do my certain exercises for a few weeks, which doesn't happen a lot, but sometimes there's like one or two weeks where I don't do anything, mm -hmm. I can feel it. I can feel that my mind, because it's the nature of the mind, my mind comes up with some really negative things. Uh, it comes up with some really deep negative emotions. Maybe some trauma comes out or you meet someone or something in the gym. I did a really bad sparring and then I feel like even when I'm not a fighter anymore, I still obviously want to be good. 
and uh, so so things happen and I feel and then I go back to my practices similar to the body if you don't train if you're used to train your body and then you stop for sometimes a month you feel like an old person all of a sudden you feel incapable so you mm. go back into the gym you train and everything is good so so it's like this, it's not pleasant of course not and it's uh, work on yourself is work for life right so until life. the moment you die you will have to work on yourself the world is really quickly evolving uh, everything is quickly changing so we need to be adaptable not just in fight look fighting sports how much it evol evolves always new fighters a little mm. bit different new styles techniques, yeah. Kind of, yeah yeah and you like and that that's why you'll be the glory champion because we will make sure that you'll be adaptable, flexible, ready to go. You will have mental clarity, stability. You regulate your nervous system and that's how you go. It right? was just like a music to my ears right now. Yeah, <laughs> but that's what we do, right? We have, that, that's what you do. You set a mission. This yeah. is our mission, first step. And then after this, we'll see what come. And we are workers, we're hard workers. So we do our work every day. And then you have also results. That's mm. just how it is. Perfect. I just can't say thank you enough for your time and uh, for, for this talk. And I think uh, there's, you, you, you give a lot of um, information that will help for pe people thank you. to understand that, like I always say, that everything is impossible. You just need to believe and work. And yes. if you cannot do it, just find a person <laughs> that can help you with that yeah, and do it. Still do it. Yeah. Daria, thank you very much. Thank you. Now, you will be able to do this and you will be able to do it and you will be able to do it and you will be able to do it as much as possible. I will link you to the next one, the next one, and as we are talking about mental strength. Iki sekunde çıkartın.